What's up, everybody? And welcome back to this channel. You guys, gals, kids, teens, all you, go get a squad, people. How are you doing today? I'm at my warehouse. I'm printing. The printers print by itself, so they don't need me there. So I was like, let me go for a drive. And I start seeing stuff around this city that they're really upgrading this city. Now, listen, Melbourne has like two different downtown looking things. They have one downtown Melbourne, and then they used to have a part of the city used to be called E Galley. And E Galley had a little downtown. So once E Galley dissolved, it all became Melbourne. So now they're building another downtown looking thing in that area. Now they're bringing back that area to look like a little small, little miniature downtown. It's really nice over there. And it's a lot of stuff going on right here. So I'm gonna show you guys what used to be E Galley, Florida. What's now? Melbourne, Florida. If this is your first time tuning in, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with all the vlogs that I post. Now let's go. The William H. Glinson House. The William H. Glinson House was built around 1884 by William Henry Glinson. C 1830s to 1902 and his wife Sarah Griffin Glitzen. I give y'all more information about this house, but we're not here for that. We're here just to see the house. But you can see the house is historical. The house been here since 1884. It's a nice old house. I bet some creepy stuff went on in that house there. Oh, y'all see that girl looking out the window up there? Y'all see her? She's coming for me. She's coming. I mean, this is one old beautiful house, you guys. You can see they have a big old nice generator there. So whoever owns this house is taking care of it. It also have a big garage in the back too. You can pull in right here. You can go right to the garage. But yeah, it's one nice big house. The historic Rosetta House Museum. So I guess they turned the house into a museum. But ever since the three Freemans founded this area, a lot of more people moved to this area and they lived in these homes. And these homes have been turned into museums. So, but you can see this is a part that goes with the Rosetta House. And right there, I guess that may be the graveyard. Let's pull over and see where the founders who lived in the Egali area and founded this area and lived in that house back there, they are probably buried right here in that cemetery right there. So let's go check out this cemetery. The Pioneer Houston family built its first home just southeast of this location. It was customary in those days of the 19th century to bury the dead on the family property. Thus, this cemetery was established in 1883 when 27-year-old Samuel Houston died on February 17, 1883. The James W. Rosetta House. James Wadeworth Rosetta, 
Sr. came to E-Galley in 1902. He purchased this property in 1903. The house was built before the war between the states and is on the former site of the Houston's family slave quarters. Did y'all just read that? Did y'all just read that? The Houston family's slave quarters. One of the one member of that pioneer family was born in the older part of this house. This house has been enlarged over the years to its present size. Two of the interesting features of the interior of the house are the ceilings and the walls, which are constructed with small pieces. Ah, you know, I don't want to know nothing about all that. I'm just saying... Y'all seen what I just read? The slaves. So I was, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering now, because I see something when I first pulled in, it's like an older car was parked inside that little garage right there. I guess they closed it, but um, we gotta learn more about this house. You best to believe, Tim gonna get to the story. Tim gonna get to the story. What went on in this area? Rosetta Memorial Park. Houston Memorial Park presented to the E Galley Garden Club 1947. Susan Edwards, one of the founders of the E Galley Garden Club, dedicated by the E Galley Garden Club. Alright, now we're in the same area and, um, uh, Let's see right here. All right, this is the Houston Park. The Houston family, the house I just showed you guys back there, Rosetta, and the memorial. I just found they named this little area. They're calling this a park. And they even have hours of the park, but they're naming it, they named it after the Houston family. Now, I ain't gonna lie, it's beautiful out here. It's really beautiful. Nice homes, nice boats. It's a park on that side of the river. I've been on that side already. All right, and then if you can see right here on the sign here uh, at this home right here that is says the e-galley yacht club and it says the e-galley yacht club was completed in january 1912 at a cost of three thousand the officers of the club were george f patterson president cole cw and blah 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 but i guess this is where the yacht club used to be back then in the 1900s. Mm. Following the Civil War, Confederate Secretary of War John C. Breckenridge and his encounterage came down the Indian River in a sailboat on their journey to Cuba where Breckner Ridge knew he would be safe from prosecution by the United States government. I guess they used this house right here it was across the street from the Rosetta house. They call this the Rosetta House Office Tour Events. So if you would like to tour the Rosetta House, you would come here, you would pay your fee, 
and they will give you a tour of the house. So I guess I will come back and pay the fee so I can see the house. With slave being on there, it shouldn't be good, nothing good to black folks about this house. I'm telling you now, it says slave on there. When you say slave, you're talking about slaving black kids, women, and men, and also torture and murder. Don't care what nobody say. Slaves was treated like animals back in that time. it's like in these areas they will not tell you the true history of what went on so the this is things that i like to find out like you would never knew that three black men found in melbourne if i didn't dig if you look on the city of melbourne website they would have a whole lie on their website who founded this place but it's kind of interesting that they don't want to give black people the credit that they deserve. They don't want to tell the truth. So we supposed to believe in the law. We supposed to believe in the constitution. We supposed to believe in everything white people say, but a lot of the stuff that you guys been presenting are lies. Black people get looked at as bad thugs all this crazy stuff right and you have white folks that done killed slaughtered and murdered black family kids and we are the bad guys i don't understand this i white people are just like oh we are the great people and black people are a bunch of animals and Black people, white people are better than black people. Like, why the F did y'all get this from? Because I don't understand it. I don't see it and I don't understand it. Because I was just watching something on YouTube on um, a channel I watch all the time. It's like a, 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 a news station. And they had a story on a white teacher telling a black student that he's a N and white people are better than black people. I am going to put the link in the description below so you can go see this. This stuff is still going on today. I don't understand why you white people think you're better than me because you're not. Straight up. You're not. And you're not better than nobody black. To me, nobody's better than nobody.